What's up guys, Romsko here, back with another review, the show where we find out whether you should add something to your lifestyle or should stay untouched for the rest of your life. And today, we're going to be reviewing the new Nike Epic React. The Nike Epic React is Nike's newest running shoe, built for runners, but also made as a lifestyle shoe in mind, aka something you can rock with in any kind of outfit. As you can see, we have the triple black colorway, or as I like to call it, the black and blue colorway. Starting off with the upper, it's a full fly knit upper, and starting from the toe on the edges is a tough fly knit for durability since it's the front of the shoe. Moving up, you can see the prominent toe box area with a diamond weave with lots of holes promoting breathability. And if you run your finger across the fly knit, you can hear the transition from tough, sturdy fly knit to a soft, stretchy fly knit. Have a listen. Moving on to the lacing system, there's ordinary flat laces with black aglets, and there's technically no cage, but there are these two thick stroke lines for structure and are made out of a soft touch plastic. Kind of like a super thin suede material like those fuzzy pencils you use to get at book fairs, but toned down by 90%. On the medial side, there's also the Flyknit logo in a reflective paint that shows up when there's light. On both sides, we have the Nike swoosh logo, made of a sandstone type material like the back of the OnePlus 5T. Feels really nice and is quite thick and kind of holds the structure of the shoe as well. For the shoe opening, the tongue is made of a very stretchy fly knit, just as stretchy as a city sock prime knit. The sides are pretty flexible and rigid, making it easy to put on, yet it's firm enough to hold your ankles in place. The heel portion also has the same tough fly knit as the toe of the shoe, and this heel tab is my favorite feature of the whole shoe. It's short, has a bit of rigidness, and the Epic React logo is cleanly placed onto it in its glorious black and blue color. As for the heel counter, on the inside there's a soft white suede structure, it's very sturdy and soft and holds the ankle well. While on the outside we have the same thin suede material as the lacing structure, and on the medial side we have the Nike words slanted in a reflective coating. It pops up just a bit but it's also very subtle to the point that it's a great addition to the heel rather than having it blank. Also there's a reflective tab that works well when you're running in the dark when light hits it. And underneath the heel is the Nike React embroidery on this plastic shell that has a matte metallic paint finish, with the Nike logo also being at the center. For our insole, it's your regular Nike insole, blue on the bottom, black on the top with the blue Nike swoosh. It's very clean and I really love this color scheme. Interestingly enough, underneath the insole is actually a suede layer, which is a testament to Nike's attention to detail. No one will ever see this, but they put the suede layer in for better comfort, which I think is a great addition. Now moving on to the most important part of the shoe, the React cushioning. Visually, it gives off a tire tread vibe which isn't bad, but it's kind of interesting. Especially on the backside, it gives off a really strong foam vibe from all these micro wrinkles, and it reminds me of yoga mats in gym class. You might not have noticed, but around the shoe sole, there are all these pins strategically placed, essentially the equivalent of boost pins which do nothing, but I assume it's a way to check for authenticity. There's even one on the plastic piece right on top of another one on the sole. These are the soles of the Epic Reacts, the most controversial part of the shoe, so let's go over the features. At the top, we have the rubber tread, same with the bottom, with the treads lining up with the React sole. But unlike most shoes we know to date, there's always been a full rubber sole below the cushioning material for durability's sake, such as the Continental sole on the Ultra Boost. However, Nike decided to remove most of it and only have the rubber on the tip and the bottom of the sole, which wear out the fastest due to the way we walk heel toe. But first, let me make it very clear that this sole is straight out of the box, has not been worn whatsoever, is literally a dead stock sole, and this is what it looks like. The rubber treads on top are very deep and rigid, same with the bottom half. On the lateral side of the sole, it's slightly treaded, but it's pretty much a flat sole and I don't know why they did that, but this is a dead stock tread. 
In the middle, you can see how the treads are very deep in the center of the shoe near the heel. Then the deepness continues towards the arch of the shoes to the medial side where the treads are the deepest. And then it slightly extends to the middle of top section of the sole as well. Using a handle of a screwdriver, I'll let you hear the difference in treads. So the question is, is the Epic React more comfortable than the Ultra Boost? Well, it actually depends. Technically speaking, the React is more comfortable than Boost. That's because in the technology of this React sole, it compresses and reinflates a lot slower than Boost. Boost bounces back a lot faster and is more responsive, while this React sole pushes in slow and comes back out slow, making it feel more cloudy and more cushiony. When walking around with it, you can feel more compression of the React sole under your foot. For running, it definitely gives you a more relaxed stride, while Ultra Boost is more performance based because of the almost instant bounce back of Boost. So, I think the main difference between the Adidas Ultra Boost and the Nike Epic React is that the Ultra Boost is more performance based, while the Epic React is more built for a casual type of run. I am personally not that worried about the sole being worn out quickly. Most of the pressure goes into the heel and toe when walking, and unless you're dragging your feet on the floor, there's no reason why they should wear down faster than normal. Besides, you can tell that Nike's been researching about how traditional soles are worn out by the foam ridges being super deep where there's a lot of pressure. As you can see in the middle of the sole near the top, and a bit at the bottom, also at the arch of the foot, in comparison to the rest of the sections. And I'm pretty sure the deepness of the sole is around the same thickness as the continental sole, so it balances out the comparison. Unlike rubber, foam thins down instead of being worn out completely, so I really don't think that having an open React sole is a big deal. In fact, I think it's because of the open sole you can feel the cushioning a lot better since there's no rubber in between the ground and the sole. There's pretty much no flaws regarding build quality of the shoe except for one thing. You can see a lot of glue all around the shoe of where it's being used. There's no reason a $150 shoe should have this much glue gloss on almost everything. Also, the plastic heel piece is super inconsistent. Some parts have gaps between the piece and the React. Mine had this hard cut on it straight out of the box, and there's all these smudges and bumps on it, and the React doesn't even fit flush with the piece on the corners. These observations makes this shoe a little less appealing, and Nike should know way better than this. So much for attention to detail. Sizing wise, true to size would probably be best, but for here in the toe area, it's a lot narrow, so if you have wide feet, you might want to go, well you definitely want to go half size or even a full size up because it really is snug on your foot. But of course, if you have the opportunity to go to the store and try it on first, that would be the most ideal option. So at the end of the day, the Nike Epic React is a casual running shoe that can be worn with all kinds of outfits and is personally one of my favorite shoes of 2018. The silhouette and design really stand out to me and it really calls onto my name, especially with this black and blue design. It's really clean and I'm really loving it. There's a whole bunch in stock, so they're not really selling out in stores, so you'll definitely have a chance to try them out in the stores. What do you guys think about the Nike Epic Reacts? Are they your style? They're personally my style, but you might think differently. You might even think Ultra Boost is more comfortable than the Epic Reacts. Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching this video, guys. I hope it was super informative and gave you lots of information about this shoe and whether to buy it or not. I hope to catch more W's in the future so I can give the complete in and out reviews of more dope shoes. And thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe to see more cool content like this. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.